Hello, everybody. This is Matt Lilly, your host of the PWO WrestleCast, not coming from you live this Monday. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties, so we are recording a video and having it posted tonight. And we'll also be on the YouTube channel as well, hopefully doubling up there for everyone who might miss it. Um, but we're here to quickly discuss the wrestling from this weekend. With me tonight, I have the greatest ref there is, Cod Sinclair. Hello. And our very own PWO's front man, it's D. White. Yeah, that's right. That's the Dean of Old School right here. <laughs> Woo. Um, and guys, you know what? We had two really good pay-per-views this weekend. Um, I, it was a much better wrestling weekend than I honestly thought we were going to have. Uh, we're going to start with No Surrender here. Uh, so Impact, starting off No Surrender, we get a cold open for... Uh, well, what really felt like. Well, hey, man, before we get let, let, before we get started, man, let's let's all like let's take a mea culpa, okay? You, me, Todd, Jeff, wherever he is, Ben, Pat, that we're always glass half empty when we're talking about some of this stuff, you know. Um, not when New Japan comes on, but and so I think we got caught doing a little bit of that, a little bit of glass half empty, especially for NXT. Um, I will admit sure. to that. And then, so I think um, I felt like I was, there, there were potential for some really in, enjoyable things. And I think maybe we got so bogged down in, in our, um, you know, Eeyore type uh, attitude toward wrestling sometimes that, we missed that it could be good. So I'm going to apologize for uh, looking on the, although I'm the only person here who claims, who both loves Wrestle House and um, is cool with the Roman Reigns heel turn. So I think I'm a little more of a glass half full guy than you two, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, I, was about to okay. say, I don't know. I feel like Cod and I are pretty, uh, we're pretty. Um... You're right. You're right. It's Jeff. It's just Jeff. Oh, You're right. Jeff. Jeff, it's Jeff and Pat. Pat. Yeah. Pat. Everyone you but know, us, the three on hey, the show, till you know till, what time uh, it is. Someone comes over here and yells at us. Yeah, hey, match time. Uh, You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never, never mind. We have nothing to apologize for to those guys. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, look, you guys are about to turn Russell House into my house with what you're talking about. <laughs> so, with that, we do. <laughs> speaking of Russell House. Show opens up for No Surrender with a really cold open for Tommy Dreamer's 50th birthday. And honestly, I got to tell y'all, the whole time watching this, I'm sitting there going, yo, is Dreamer retiring? Yes. So tell me this didn't tell me this didn't give off the vibe of Vince McMahon walking through the backstage area, getting ready to get in the limousine to blow up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That's exactly it, honestly. As horrible as that is, that's exactly it. Now, I didn't think that Tommy Dream was going to get in a limousine and blow up, but um, this was a moose. Yeah, Matt hit it right on the nose, though. This felt like a retirement pro promo to start. Um, but then the show opens up with Triple XL and Tennille Dashwood, who they brought in for this match, versus Decay, Rosemary, Crazy Steve, and Black Taurus. Thank God um, it's not Sammy Guevara. Yeah, thank God it's not Sammy Guevara, <laughs> as we're saying. Um, Decay ends up picking up the win here. Looks like maybe uh, Tennille Dashwood either faking an injury or maybe uh, playing out that she has an elbow injury. Um, but overall, good showing by Decay. Hopefully Black Toru sticks around for a little bit. I really liked him. Um, honestly, he may have been the highlight of the match for me. Yeah, aside from the AAA okay. um, – gimmick that he has um no nah, he was he was probably the one that surprised me the most out of everyone um mm. great opening match though um man the big one for yeah, me and this big corkscrew plancha over the top rope that i was like whoa all right and, and larry <laughs> did not do the best of jobs catching him on it but no no mm. Torus, Torus, i thought was incredibly impressive in all this yeah, um, if, and I and I would say that right there, um, AC Romero probably had one of the, uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I thought he had a very fortunate moment where uh, he got to uh, power bomb to Neil Dashwood. <laughs> <laughs> Not the power bomb. 
AC baby. AC baby. AC AC baby. Up next, it's Brian Myers and Hernandez versus Eddie Edwards and Matt Cardona. Heels go over here, Brian Myers and Hernandez, after uh, Cardona gets in face forward into an exposed turnbuckle and then getting hit with the roster cut. Uh, that's my new favorite uh, finisher name. I love that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, and you know what? I'm happy that Brian Myers won. Very, very big on that. Yeah. A little upset that my initial prediction of Eddie Edwards going crazy didn't happen. Thank but God. I think it's still going to happen. But have we gotten an, an Eddie Edwards, Tommy Dreamer hardcore match yet? Because Oh, my God. Uh, yes, yeah. we've already yeah. had that. Plenty, oh, okay. of, <laughs> plenty of times we don't want to see it uh, we yeah, I don't want to see the theatrical Eddie Edwards crazy Eddie Edwards match either. I don't want yeah, none of that. that I, don't know. I still think it's gonna happen, but it didn't happen on Saturday. Up next, we had Diener of Violent by Design with Violent by Design uh, coming out to face Jake something. Jake new music, new look, uh, and honestly, million bucks. I was immediately in uh, knowing. Jake, something from the independence. I was very happy with this. Um, yeah. God. Also, he has, I think, my favorite boss man slam right now. Yeah, uh, which they egregiously really? called it a black hole slam on commentary, so they can they can shove it. Um, there is a difference between a black hole slam and and a boss man slam. Um, other than that, yeah. commentary did fine. Jake, something's a star. Um, he's an immediate contender based on based, based on appearance and what he did in the ring Saturday. Right. Um, I completely agree. Then after the match, after he won, he got dropped by Violent by Design, uh, super power bump through a table. So we're not done here. Up next, we have the triple threat revolver match. Winner will be uh, will become the number one contender for the X division title. Let me go ahead and give you this breakdown to the best of my ability. The match started with Trey Miguel, Blake Christian, and Suicide. Suicide ended up tapping out to Trey Miguel. Chris Bay came in. Uh, Blake Christian was then eliminated after Chris Bay hit him with a Verda Baker. Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, Davari in. Davari eats a Meteora from Trey Miguel. Davari is out. Josh Alexander comes in. He uh, gets Chris Bay in the ankle lock, and, and uh, Chris Bay taps out. Out comes Willie Mack. Willie Mack is in. Uh, he's also then eliminated not long after uh, with another Meteor from Trey Miguel. Out comes our last man, Ace Austin. And wow. unfortunately, Ace Austin gets hit with the Death Valley pile driver by Josh Alexander. Oh, okay. Josh Alexander is your new number one contender for the X Division title. And he will be uh, challenging TJP tomorrow. Also, there you go. Uh, TJP won his match. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Also, also, if we had yeah. if we'd known the news, uh, we would know that Blake Christian wasn't going to win this since he's going to – he just signed with uh, WWE and will be in the new NXT uh, class along with Taya. Uh, so ha farewell to Blake Christian. Best of luck. But uh, if I had known that, I'd, I would have – Obviously, not giving him any consideration yeah. in this match, but agreed. I think we should have stuck to our um, guns on Josh Alexander. Well, yeah, I, as a matter of fact, and I do recall on the prediction show, I said that until Ryan scrambled my brain with this whole Sammy Guevara talk, that I got who I thought was going to win this. And so I got to stop listening to you. Yeah. Um, I can get you with a quick count, man. You can't stop it. Um, I want more Ace Austin. Um, it, it, it does. I mean, it didn't continue the conspiracy that we talked about in the, in the prediction show that he's, you know, kind of getting screwed over, but, um, nobody looked bad. Everybody looked fine. Um, nobody, nobody loses any stock by losing in this match wow. or going out to be, or being eliminated. Um, but yeah, I really hope we get something out of Josh, Josh Alexander tomorrow night. We need, I mean, after, you know, we talk about the X Division Championship match, um, 
I'll give you some more of my opinion on what may happen tomorrow night. But uh, very, very excited for Josh Alexander to be getting a singles push. Definitely. Pat and I, ooh. <coughs> oh, my bad, I'm dying. Um, well Pat and I were very concerned when Ethan Page left that uh, Josh Alexander was going to get lost in the fold. So really happy that it seems like he's going to be sticking around here for a bit. Up next, we have the Knockouts Tag Title Match. Fire and Flava defeated Havoc and Nevea. This match was fine. Um, it was acceptable. Yeah, God. Still don't care. <laughs> I really don't. It was – it exceeded – Ex- expectations but it was still bad um i think i think we're trying to give it credit because it was you know because there were some weapons involved um havoc was the worst performer in the entire ring um Nevaeh just kind of stumbles around like she's just a warm body in the ring um i have come to the determination that um that I have not given Fire and Flava the, the little bit of credit that they deserve. Um, I prefer Kiara Hogan to Tasha Steeles, um, to which we were talking in our group. And I forget who said it, but they, but they were like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know which one is Tasha Steeles, but I like her. And I was like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's embroidered on her ass. Um, yeah. But... But no, um, Havoc and Nevaeh with this second loss need to take a step back. Let's get some new challengers in here. Well, um, let's see what we can do. you say that because uh, following this match, they kind of hinted that maybe they're going to be breaking up here soon. Nevaeh seemed very frustrated with how everything is going with Havoc. Good. Mm-hmm. She's awful. Um, uh, I don't know if she's awful. She doesn't work well in a tag team. That's She's a good monster heel. But um, as far as, yeah, the tagging in and out, plus it was a, I mean, that's a bizarre uh, matchup anyway, stylistically. But let me just say, I've been watching, looking online, a lot of people are giving this match love, like way a lot of love. And some people said that it stole the show. And I'm like, I don't know what you guys were watching. It was okay. But yeah, I didn't didn't think this was a show stealer at all. I thought it was fine. It was good. It was what it was. I think guys are gonna, Flavor, yeah. Flava, uh could be utilized better and maybe facing a different tag team who complements them a bit better. Um, but that's just me. Um, surprisingly, this was not my worst match of the night. Uh, was it? Well, I guess I'll ask you when we get there. Uh, <laughs> up next, we had... Uh, Rohit Raju with Mahabala Shira versus TJP. As I already kind of gave away, TJP retained here. This was a really fun match, but I was not very happy with the finish of it. Um, obviously, I'm not a big TJP guy. Uh, I just really felt like Rohit looked way too strong the entire match. Very John Cena-esque, where like John Cena comes out of nowhere, hits the attitude adjustment, and wins. It felt very much so like that. Yeah, it definitely seemed like... Um... You know, he he outworked T, uh, TJP in the ring, for for sure. And even getting the outside assistance from Mahabali Shara, the last week of King World Heavyweight Champion, um, still couldn't get it done. And it's frustrating because TJP, I think, I I think his I think there's not much rope left to pull with him. Um, I think he needs to go back under the mask. Needs to go back to being su- suicide. Um, I hope Josh Alexander dro- drops him on his head tomorrow night and just takes the title um, with a Death Valley pile driver. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't want him to be killed. Um, but yeah, I think it's time for a changing of the guard in in, um, in the X division. I also think that be, that it that you get immediate storyline with with the various tag tag teams that the North have gone over over the past year, year and a half. And that could create new, new challengers for the X division title. Um, so that's my hope and prayer tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, this match was fine for what it was. 
Yeah, yeah. that's about it. Pretty much. Up next, we had Diana Perrazzo, Kimber Lee, and Susan versus Jazz, Jordan, Grace, and ODB. Uh, good guys were, uh, went over here. Um, Jazz had Susan tap out in the STF. Uh, this really confused me because I was like, wait, wait, wait. I'm pretty certain I just saw Susan tap out, but the way Jazz was selling her eye, I was like, what just happened? What am I missing? What's going on? Yeah. Um, contrary to potential popular belief, um, I despised this match. Um, it was, you know, everybody got their spots in, which is which is fine. Um, but there was what was what was the game? There was nothing to gain. There was nothing on the line. It was six women in the ring for the sake of being six women in the ring. There was. There mm-hmm. were there was no tag team work. There was no in ring chemistry. Um, we had way too much Susan. Um, I think it's a huge mistake to have her to have her character reflect her in ring work. Um, I thought that was the worst aspect of the night. Um, um, the main event was better than this, only with the in ring work. Um, but this was extremely disappointing considering who was involved. Um, and I really expect more. Um, so I'm hoping we can move uh, past this. Let's get away from the six woman action. Um, go back to having Deanna Prazo kick ass. Okay. I'm tired of this. We're going to need someone to also step up. So she has someone to defend the belt against. And yeah, that I feel, you know what? It might be Jordan well, Grace I- again, unfortunately. It, it it might be, but you, you know, from way from the way it looked, um, it's it, you know we're, we've got jazz going forward, and they're bringing her. That's what I was thinking. You know, that's kind of like, yeah, yeah, we're we're like moving moving backwards to move forwards, and I thought we were done with that, but um, having you know with not just jazz but with ODB also being, mm-hmm. I mean, this is this isn't two thousand nine, but it kind of seems like it is, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, hopefully that's just that, that I was thinking it was just like a you know a short term thing, but I, it doesn't appear that it is. So we shall see. Agreed. All right, and up next we had the triple threat tag title match between the Good Brothers, James Storm and Chris Saban, and Private Party. Um, this match was fine. I want to say it was fine. Good Brothers retained here. Um, Mark Quinn hit a crazy shooting star press. They have it for some reason written down as a moonsault here, but it was a shooting star press, and I remember that because it was stupid high. Like, he got some yeah. elevation on it, but was uh, tagged out by uh, Carl Anderson, who gets uh, Quinn out of the ring and collects the pin. This match was good. My big issue with it was that it's the triple threat tag rules where you do have one tag team that's just sitting there. I feel like when you do these kind of matches, you need to have it just be tornado tag. I know we kind of already set that up with the women's tag title match, but uh, I feel like you just have to have it in this situation. Yeah, I feel like that really bogged down the match. Um, like you said, it was it was it was good. Um, it continues the drama between Impact and AEW with um, Private Party not eating the pin. I thought that was I thought that that was that was great. I think we all predicted that, um, unless we predicted Private Party to win. Um, the Good Brothers pulling out their heel tactics, which I which I thought was fine. Um, they're they're doing enough on both shows as it is. Um, I'm very intrigued um, to see when Alex Shelley returns because I'd rather see the Motor City Machine Guns. Um, right. uh, Saving and Storm, I'm, I think it's, I think that's run its course as well. Um, good in concept, man, execution. Um, but I, but I think the next question is who are the next challengers for the Impact Tag Team Championships? Well, you know, I, I'm going to say, I, I can't think of a time when they took one guy from 
each of two successful tag teams and put them together and it worked since um, they took Stan Lane from the Fabulous Ones and added it to Dennis Condry and the Midnight Express to make the new Midnight Express. That was a long time ago. Um, can anybody else think of, of a time besides, because um, I don't think beer money counts because I mean, Team Canada wasn't really, yeah. uh, so, uh, but, but where they took, like, took apart and had a person from each of a tag team and made it work. I don't, I don't know that that's, correct me if I'm no, wrong. No, the only thing, no, the only thing I, re I can recall in recent memory is when um, WWE did it on the pre-show a couple years back. Um, when they um, split FTR and AOP um, okay. and had one of them, but it still was not worth it. Right. And, and so that's what this was. Um, and if, I, I want to see what they do with James Storm because he had, in NWA, I mean, he was a top guy. And I'd like to see him more in the singles picture than, than random and tag. Him. We're going to need to talk about NWA on Thursday because I feel like there's a lot we're going to have to unpackage here with mm -hmm. that. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, and I know that um, James Storm did his did his interview um, in the back half of last year, and revealed that he was supposed to debut after WrestleMania. Obviously, COVID hit, and he just went about his way. So, I'm very interested to see if maybe there's something in the works there, um, which is maybe why they didn't go over here. Uh, but they were involved in the fall. Um, so he might be NXT bound. I feel like he would be a breath of fresh air, his character and um, what he can do in the ring for them. Um, but yeah, either there or NWA, I'll be very excited. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm about to say, to answer your question on who's next, let's pause because there's something that happened at the end of this pay-per-view that I think is going to be the answer there. So following this, we had uh, the main event, the Impact World Championship match between Tommy Dreamer and Rich Swan. Tommy Dreamer outworked Rich Swan. Yeah, it's sad. And I know I saw on the prediction show, he's been Impact World Heavyweight Champion for over 110 days now. Um, but and we've all in some way, shape or form over the past year been critical of Tommy Dreamer, whether it be his promo, his in-ring work. We will not talk about Russell House because he was awesome in Russell House. Um, or the fact that he won't take choke, uh, choke slams anymore. Um, but no, good on, good on Dreamer. Um, if this was his retirement match, why the hell would you pick Rich Swan? Um, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, although if it is his retirement match, he outworked a a North American promotions world champion. And I think that that speaks volumes. I don't think that speaks volumes for Tommy Dreamer, though. When 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 you put it in the broad in the broad way that I put it, that you outworked a North American promotions world champion. So, um, mm. yeah, when we say it like that, but you know what? Yeah. Let I'm me, trying let to me sugarcoat it. This it. Way. And I try to sugarcoat it. I know Rich Swan is also the world champion of this organization I'm about to talk about, but next gen pro wrestling from Tennessee have a guy who a lot of us have heard of, Matt Cross. They're the only 10 I see. And if Matt Cross, was world champion and you told me that Tommy Dreamer worked Matt Cross, I'd be sitting here telling you I'm impressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I I don't feel like Rich Swan's repertoire of matches has been impressive since becoming champion, even winning the belt. I'm mm -hmm. not I'm not on mm -hmm. the train. Um, he looked like the weakest link with the six man tag that just happened prior. In all of his his defenses, he hasn't looked like the guy. I'm sorry. No, but you, yeah, you know, I'm going to agree with you, Matt. And I'm going to tell you that I've always had this feeling with Rich Swan, even when he was in NXT. Um, he always looks like he sh should be better than he is, right? Like you see a guy like Chris Bay, who is super athletic, good, crazy stuff. 
right? You think Rich Swan should be that guy, right? Same kind of ricochet. He should be in that category. He is not in that category. And so if you're not going to be in the athletic category, you've got to make up for it in other ways. So, you, you know, you've got to be it on the mic. You've got to be it in your persona. He's not that either. So um, Rich Swan, I think, is he, he honestly, like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I've, I don't, I've never seen him as anywhere near the top of the card. I mean, he belongs in the X division, toiling along in the X division or in a tag team. That's where he belongs and leave the world championship. To get, and Tommy Dreamer, who, if you, I mean, it's not like Tommy Dreamer has had, you know, really good matches moving up to this. I mean, he's had some forgettable matches over the past couple of years when he comes out to do it. I and mean, even when he had Rob Van Dam, I mean, it was like Tommy Dreamer looked like an old guy, right? And so I think it says a lot more for not so much for how much effort Tommy Dreamer put in, but just how bad Rich Swan is. And I think um, let's just let's just I think you're right. I think we, it is time to move on from him um, and put him in his rightful place in the mid card. And you know we'll enjoy whoever else belongs at the top of the card. Like oh I don't know, loose. Yeah, and that's and and that's the. That's the obvious, correct choice as to who should be the next Impact World Champion, unless this is a longer build for the belt collector and for Kenny Omega to be mm -hmm. the next Impact World Champion. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I would rather see Moose versus Kenny Omega as opposed to Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. I don't even care if it's for the title. No. Uh, Take the I title agree with you. Yeah. At that same sense, though, as much as I'd rather see Moose versus Kenny Omega, I'd rather see Moose finally win back the Impact World title from Kenny Omega to bring it back to Impact. That's my thought. Um, I, I feel like he could get the bigger rub okay. that way. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hear totally that they're. I hear. I hear that. Uh, um, Samoa Joe's old sidekick Okato, Okato might come and take it away from that's what I heard. Yeah, you guys can check out Quick Count this week as I review uh, Samoa Joe versus D'Angelo De Niro from TNA Against All Odds, um, where we see this this uh, gentleman called Okato. Uh, well, <laughs> speaking of New Japan coming over, very end of Impact. Following the their closing little vignette video that they do, we get a video promo of Dave Finley and Juice Robinson from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they are coming to Impact. Talking about my Finn Juice. Yes, uh, and is that Finn Juice you're talking about? That is Finn Juice, baby. <laughs> yeah. And they are coming to Impact. That's what I think is next for the Good Brothers. And I'll tell you this as well. I think this is all going to lead towards maybe a – uh, super card of honor. Oh, if they pull a ring of honor in this as well. I'll be so happy. Super card of honor. <laughs> um, I'm excited. We we have a lot we can talk about there, but that is for another day, probably Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did say this earlier. Um, what a time to be a wrestling fan. What a time. What a this is. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked over the last year or two about, you know, just the um, emergence of AEW and independent promotions getting better. Um, but now we're sitting in 2021. We have people watching everything. We have people watching Impact. Mm -hmm. We have people watching MLW. We have people starting to mm -hmm. branch to New Japan. Um, it's great. This is this is the best time to be a professional wrestling fan. God, God, it sounds like well, we have to go the, about. Yeah, but just think about the weekend. I mean, we had people. I mean, we had people from AAA. You know, you had yeah. New Japan, AAA, Impact, AEW, all, MLW, all on one card. I mean, we we had that this weekend. Yeah, I mean, and that's. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, you know, I love it. As a, as a, you know, as a person who was old enough to be alive during the territory days, um, that was the cool thing, was when, you, when I could come home and, and, 
as a 14 year old every night turn on my television and there was a different wrestling program on that I watched every single night. And so I, 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 at that time I had wrestling six days a week and that's because, you know, n Sunday was nothing. I, I mean, I guess they had it on whatever, but yeah, we're kind of going through that right now at the, and not just at the YouTube level, right. Where you could always catch some Indies and things like that. Now this is top level world renowned stuff. So that we're all being exposed to. Awesome. I love it. I love it. But guys, let me talk to you here. Uh, let me talk coming over to, to you. Let me talk to you. Because we got to talk <laughs> NXT TakeOver. And we're talking TakeOver. We got to talk that pre-show. And let me tell you, it just got a bit more fabulous. Because we got L.A. Knight showing up on Wednesday nights. For NXT, for those of you who don't know who we're talking about, sorry, Drew. This is Eli Drake, and he is here on NXT now. He has signed officially. Uh, NXT, well, WWE has signed a total of about two dozen talents over the weekend that we're going to break down later. But we're here to talk about TakeOver, and he makes his official announcement and debut, signing the papers on uh, the pre-show here. Cod? Yes. Um so doing my journalistic research today, um, stumble across the fact that um, the trademark for Eli Drake um, is dead. Nobody owns it, it's not, it's not active. Um, so this would have been a great opportunity for WWE to, swap, to swoop in, pick up the trademark and use it. Mm -hmm. And not only to use it, but to pull in fans from outside of the WWE bubble, to pull them into the sagging ratings that are NXT. So I don't know why right. we have to repackage a guy that is already a star. And on top of that, it now makes me really worried um, for what we are going to name Ethan Page, because we <laughs> I already told you, Elijah Davis is going to be great. Oh, my God. If it's Elijah Davis, just sign him oh, up for jobber on. status. Um, yeah, that's, that's – yeah. That's. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into more information on the signings and the name changes. Lord knows we're going to just need to talk about that. And that will be your stereotypical, why WWE, what are you doing? But let's talk some takeover. Let's talk TakeOver 33, Vengeance Day, which is just a silly name. Really is. Just a silly name. Um, so, Wade Barrett did shed some light on to why it was Vengeance Day and not Valentine's Day or St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Um, not only do they want to separate themselves from the Attitude Era, but... Vengeance Day sounds a lot more tough than Valentine's Day. So here we are with the horribly named Vengeance Day. I really like Wade Barrett, but he's wrong. I'm afraid I've got some bad news there. There you go. I was waiting for it. Um, so, you know, though, this card was actually very entertaining. I, I was very happy with it. Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez defeat Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart to win the first ever Dusty Rhodes Women's Classic uh, tag team. They're going to have a shot at the uh, women's tag team titles here. Not announced to win, but they have future opportunity. This match was fine. Went a little bit longer than I would have liked. Um, you know what, though, watching it, I really thought Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart looked way more like a tag team the whole time. Um, like they, they have definitely groomed their characters to be a tag team lately. Yeah, um, they look like a tag team. They perform like a tag team. That's going to suit them when they're called up to the main roster and will probably not be a tag team. Um, yeah, they'll be a tag team for like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I am, I am very happy about this. Um, whether or not Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez win the tag team titles, um, a, nobody will care because it's the women's tag tag team titles. Um, two, um, I really hope that this leads um, 
with all the speculation of, you know, X amount of women are going up to the main roster. Um, we talked about this not only on the, on the prediction show, but on the last episode of WrestleCast. Um, who's going to be left? Um, I think this is your answer. I think we have a great opportunity here to build off of this, off of this win. If it's not for the titles, um, it'll be Dakota Kai as your next NXT Women's Champion playing the role of the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, with mm-hmm. Raquel Gonzalez playing the role of Big Daddy Cool Diesel. And it seemed like throughout the match, Raquel Gonzalez was totally fine with playing second fiddle to Dakota Kai. Now, mm-hmm. let me say this. Didn't Diesel win the world title before Shawn Michaels? No? No, no, no. No, I got that backwards. Diesel won yeah, no, no. D- yeah, Shawn Michaels had his boyhood dream when he defeated Bret Hart. Um, Diesel won his like '95. He was like the lowest. That was like the lowest ratings that of, of any world championship reign that they'd ever had. Right before he cast in his chips and went to WCW. That was a, a pathetic. Although I do Correct. recall watching um, Diesel, Big Daddy Cool Diesel, participate in the MTV Celebrity Softball Classic when he was uh, WWF uh, champion back then. Um, anyway, that was a highlight of his reign. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so all right, all right, and, and, and a really and a really cool theme song when you hear the when you hear the big. Uh, um, oh, all right, we'll lead cool. on this one, but I will say Raquel Gonzalez has pushed better for the world title. Or for the world oh title. no, one I will I one hundred percent agree. But do you know um, who one of the head producers on NXT is? I know, uh, it's Shawn Michaels. <laughs> right. Well, but here's the thing, though. If you think about it, it's almost like it's the same visual, except for the more legit worker is the big is Raquel Gonzalez, right? Yeah. Where Diesel was, is, I mean, come on, it's, it's Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash is worse than Hulk Hogan as far He's as his blow his quad in mo- ten minutes into the match. <laughs> Yeah, but he literally wrestles the exact same match with the elbow thing in the corner and the little knee thing in the corner and the big boot. And they, I mean, it's the same, the power, I mean, it's the same match. He has, he has like six moves, you know, and, and, and then the finger poke of doom, obviously. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, if you want to hear more about Kevin Nash, check out the YouTube channel. <laughs> Jeff Hall and I review WCW Super Brawl 2000. That's episode five of the Ref Bump. Go over and check it out right after this. I don't even ask him for the plug at this point. It's great. Well, 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 but here, let's think about this. You know, going forward, I think when we were talking about on the prediction show, I think going forward and having it be a they get a tag team title match. Um, it would have been more believable if it were if it were Shotzi Blackheart and Ember, Ember Moon going up. Mm-hmm. I could see those two winning it. I don't see these two winning the tag titles. I think they are NXT wrestlers at this point, and they will stay that way. So I, I, it just it stole something from me. I think the wrong team won. That's how I feel as but, well. I mean, whatever. Yeah. What do I know? I'm just an internet booker. Uh, Johnny Gargano. <laughs> Defeated Kushida to retain his North American title after Kushida outworked him for 23 minutes. Yeah, I got, I yeah. got, I got caught in work. Yep, and I am yeah, you did. totally admitting it because I vehemently said on the on the prediction show, and I've said it on this show here before. Vince hates foreigners. Kushida will not win. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Drew, you can give your hopes up. And then as the match progressed. It was everything Johnny Gargano tried to do. Kushida had an answer for, and an immediate answer. Kushida was the best wrestler on this card, and yeah. I will I will die on that hill. Um, but for some reason, we had to make use of the ramp leading from the entrance way all the way to the ring, which they haven't used. I actually have. Right. I actually know the reasoning for this. Go. So, uh, what it is is uh, they, they so they put the ramp in there. That spot was Kushida's idea, 
to pay homage to Great Muda when he did it to Hulk Hogan, and he talked about it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't care. It was dumb. Okay. How dare you? I don't even care. Johnny Gargano it should not have won this match. It makes him look like a less credible champion. Um, I don't want to say it now, makes him look like less credible because he did win the match and beat Kushida clean. Um, my big issue was just Kushida was just a far better worker. You know. Yeah. Mm. If we're if we're gonna build to this Johnny Gargano win, let him get some more offense in. It seemed yeah. and, and it seemed very one one sided for him to just pull this win out of his ass. Um, mm-hmm. It is worth noting that, like you said, Matt, he won this clean. He sent the girls to the back. Um, Austin Theory got a, got abducted before the match, which will <laughs> yeah. lead to <laughs> your. He got chloroform. <laughs> yeah, yeah, by Dex- which, Dexter which, Loomis. Yeah, which I'm gonna yeah, go ahead and say this now. I didn't catch that the first time watching. Me either. Oh, okay. Um, um, this is going to be Heidenreich and Adam Cole all over again. Or um, Michael Cole, sorry. It's going to be Heid- Heidenreich and okay. Michael yeah. Cole. Um, uh, well, that, well, that's your next North American champion because that's what we're building to. And yep. the booking for this has been awful. If you want to yep. make Dexter Loomis the North American champion, just do it. Because we didn't right. care about him during the um, Cameron Grimes feud we didn't care about him when he was meddling with undisputed era and getting involved in their in their matches don't care about him here sam shaw can go back to the impact zone Ooh. well hey with that being said i want to go back to watching this match and, and it, what it made me think of is you know being spoiled of watching the uh, juniors in new japan and watching matches like Kushida against, uh, you know, Homura Gargano. Takahashi. Oh, yeah. or, and then, and no, and just watching, like having seen those matches and seeing Kushida against, you know, that level of talent. It made me, and, and back then, you know, we were Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano was Johnny Wrestling and he's, you know, super. And it's like, maybe he, Johnny Gargano was never on that level, right? Maybe he wasn't what we thought he was. And, um, I, and I, that, that's what made me think because I'm thinking he should be able to be doing better. Like, I don't care what role you're playing. Um, Johnny Gargano did, was obviously the second best wrestler in that ring. Right. He obviously. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm agree with you on Gargano, not as good as Kushida. I'll say this though. They, they messed up by turning him heel. And I get it. You can't have a forever okay. baby face, but Johnny Gargano is not a heel. He's not. Uh, they're trying it really hard. But you know what? If you told me this is a face versus face match of Gargano versus Kushida, this would have been the match of the night. Because Gargano works mm. better. Yeah, yes, I do. I think so. I think there are two mm. matches on this card that were better than this. Um, this is easily in the middle spot for me. Um, but face Gargano works better than heel Gargano. Because he's not. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, he's okay, not but, trying to portray this. All right, Matt. Shit. Well, Matt, my Matt, hot let take me, though. Let me just throw this out to you. If this happens in 2018, if you if they announced this match that Kushida was going to go against Johnny Gargano, your mind would have been blown. You would have been so excited. You would have been able to wait until the match came, and then you would have saw this match, and you would have go, uh, "What was that?" I would tell well, you, 2018 I mean, that's what I'm would have been probably pretty happy with this. Maybe, maybe not necessarily this, but also 2018. Uh, I mean, yeah. 2018, we had a face Johnny Gargano. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> All right. Well. But here, here is the hill that I'm ready to put out here and die on. WWE has Eddie Edwards Kushida. They have Eddie oh, Edwards, Tim. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Hey. I guess I guess you that's have for to explain show. it a little more, man. No. I guess I guess, I, I guess yeah. maybe I'll have to run the ropes a little bit on that one. So uh, here's my, yeah. my quick little <laughs> definition here. We're, we're gonna uh, we'll, we'll 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 circle back. Yeah. All right, all right. We'll say we'll save this for another day. Mm-hmm. Kushida, he's been Eddie Edwards. Uh, now for my match of the night, MSK. Uh, Nash Carter and Wesley. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, 
I can't let that go. I was going to say he's been Eddie Edwards. So you mean saying someone hit him in the head with a baseball bat? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, no. You popped Pat. I don't know if you can hear it, but you popped him. But no. <laughs> Are you telling me Kushida married, married a whore? <laughs> I don't, I don't know Kushida's marital status, so I can't confirm or deny that one. Um, On it. But, what, <laughs> well, no, no, don't, because I can already imagine the commentary section on this one. What I will say mm -hmm. is they have completely changed him from who he was in terms of, you know, it, it's Kushida. You know? Coming out in actual wrestling gear, actually being a technical wrestler and they have completely mm -hmm. converted him to jeans and a tank top and a brawler. I mean, don't get me wrong. We got to show off his technical ability a bit more here with Johnny Gargano, but he's pretty much just been brawling the whole time. Despite being one of the better technical wrestlers on that roster, we're not going to take advantage of that. And we're, you know what? Nah, we're going to have him be an angry guy. who's just trying to punch everybody. Eddie Edwards, mm -hmm. and Myers has, has already put this out there on Impact. Trained by Killer Kowalski. Death match. You know who else is trained by mm -hmm. Killer Kowalski? Wrestling in, wrestling in capris and a t-shirt. <laughs> look, look. Yeah, the beer world order. Yeah. That's right. I was also going to say trips. but <laughs> You at home, yeah. you got to get your grip. You got to work on your grip. You got to work on working mm -hmm. your hand. To get the grip. But now I am going to back guard. Go ahead, where we were going. MSK won the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic here in my match tonight. I thought this was fantastic. The storytelling was incredible. And the right team won, in my opinion. Grizzled Young Vets, I don't think, lose anything from losing this spot. They had the tougher road to the finals. Um, and it, honestly, I just thought it was a really good story the entire time. I, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, hey, um, I was okay. I'm getting the names mixed up. Wesley is Xavier. Zachary, not it's Xavier. Okay. Yes, and that's so they Zachary. whipped his. He, yeah, so Wesley got his butt whipped that whole match. He did the babyface in peril thing and took. Oh man, he, he had he that he did it great, man. I, I was I was really enjoying that man. So it's it, it's like even though the Grizzle Young Vets lost, they, they don't look any any diminished at all from that. I think they can yeah. still they're still going to be right there. This NXT UK and even maybe if they stay around in NXT, um, they'll be in the mix. So uh, yeah, it was a good match. And of course, we knew those guys were good as a tag team, and we've seen them over the last couple years. So. Um, but but yeah, I think it's 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 awesome to see them like it does feel like a step up, right? Doesn't it? It feels like okay, th these guys made it at this stage. It's like a co really really good college player t taking it and and winning the rookie of the year. It's like okay, he's also good at this level, and so yeah, yeah I'm 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 all about it. Unfortunately, WWE hates tag teams, so um, it, yeah. we're gonna enjoy it while it lasts. Agree, 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 agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed this match. I really did. Yeah, this is tied for me for match of the night with the main event. Um, not taking anything away from this. Um, yeah, I'm very excited whether they pull the trigger on MSK or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um, all right, up next, yeah. triple threat match for the women's world title. It is... Io Shirai versus Mercedes Martinez and Tony Storm. Io Shirai retains here. Uh, a fine match. I thought it was fine. I really felt like it was too short. I know a lot of people have made that comment section. Uh, Trips put it out there in the post-show interview that uh, the women were given 20 minutes and they decided they only wanted 12. So right. that's when that's when you need to say, yeah, you maybe want to rethink that. Because I think this really hindered what could have been a better match. Well, let me just say that, Kai, because you you pointed something. I got my Roku hooked up in anticipation of New Japan, right? Because So I'm all excited. And there's already New Japan content on there. And so I watched a little bit of Wrestle Kingdom 14. 
and I watched the Ibushi Okada match, right? And so how do you fit, fit eight minutes or whatever extra minutes into it? You do it at the beginning because they didn't even touch each other for the first, you know, f- three or four minutes. It's a stare down. It's building a drama. It's ring psychology. That's the thing they don't do, right? They don't build it during the match. They, they get right into it, right? And it's like, no, 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 no. Or the, even even watching um, from the night that Jay White versus Naito from the first night of wrestling, you know, 14. You know, Jay White, three or four times, they go to lock up and he rolls out of the ring, right? And he, he plays that whole thing up. That's where your other minutes come from, right? Setting it up. Then you can get into it. It's like they don't seem to understand this. When you're watching it, that's ring psychology. That's that's playing. The, that's play, Even the crowd's not there. They're watching. And so I, I think the, um, it's just immaturity. And uh, they'll get that eventually, hopefully. Yeah. And um, to your point, um, I think a great example is now these two are on a different level from anything we're talking about on this show. Um, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, WrestleMania 18. Um, same thing as you were talking about. They didn't touch each other for the first handful of minutes. But the problem with this and what we want them to do is there's nothing to build here because nothing was built to get here. And it goes back to right. bad booking or loose booking mm-hmm. where, where we're just like, oh, I'm a, I'm a woman that's close, that's close to here. You know? And it's like everybody's in the immediate vicinity and it's like, oh, well, let's have a triple yeah. threat match, player. Like it, it's it's booking for the sake of booking, <laughs> and it's it just it's very infuriating. And I know I went on a small tangent on the prediction show, so if you saw that, I immediately apologize. But it's very frustrating when so, when when something that has been a surprising highlight on you know, NXT take, takeover shows the last four or four or five years um, is now this, where they're not investing the time in it anymore. Um, and it's and it's becoming obvious. Yeah, um, I, I'd agree with that. I just felt like even if you, even if you give this five more matches or five more minutes of just letting them work in the ring, you know, let's really actually show off their mm-hmm. technical prowess here. We didn't really get a good... Uh, a good, uh, I don't know, a, a good showing Bill. of that. I felt, you know. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about how well, Tom Phillips broke world. the table? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. God bless America. You know. Well, it I was. was gonna, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that's, but you'll notice um, a lot of guys that come in, especially from Japan, and they put them in NXT to learn the WWE style. Right. Well, that's the WWE style that they wrestled. Okay. If they were going to do something else that was more entertaining, well, that's not the WWE style. The WWE style says we're going to have a match, we're going to have a commercial break, and you're going to be in picture in picture, and then we're going to come back and you're going to have another about the same amount of time, and then you're going to go to the finish, which is about 16 minutes. So Mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking when I was muted. What am I doing with my life? That's pretty much it. Uh, but let's let's move forward here because I think there's a lot we can we can get on with this. What what, what about Tom Phillips? I interrupted you, Cod. No, you're fine. And it might not have even been Tom Phillips. I honestly don't know. Um, uh, it whoever, was Vic. Vic Joseph. Joseph. There you go. Sorry. Um, generic white commentators confuse me. Um, but anyway, they're brawling <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> They're brawling on the outside of the ring. What the hell are we? Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and they're right in front of the table. And Vic Joseph gets up really quick to try and like avoid, you know, the the action. And I think it was to build to the table spot, but he grazed the table and it collapsed upon itself. Yeah. And it it mm. was. <laughs> I can't wait to watch Botchamania this week. And see that on there because it's it was like it's the his... tables don't break for Botchamania. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? Vic Joseph is is the table. He is the table. 
Yeah. Oh um, god. But it was it was outstanding. All right, main event time. It's been on time out. Time out. Time out. We skipped over quite possibly the best part of this entire show. Only if you okay, you can talk about this, but you got to take it to the moon. Gosh, if you you know what, I'm not even going to give it the time be because you need to invest the time with me talking about it, going to find the video. Um, yeah. it's essentially a music video for 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 Cameron Grimes by Josiah Williams too. <laughs> yes, by Josiah Williams, and it's him celebrating all of his newly acquired money. Um, you know, cashing out all that stock he bought. Stonks. Um, yes. If you if he you have the, access, the GameStop stonks, baby. Yeah, if you Robin have Hood. access to the network, go find it. If not, it's on YouTube more than likely. If it's not there, you can find it on Twitter because you need to. It's gold. And it and I can't wait to see what they do with Cameron Grimes next because he seems like a redneck version of big money Matt Hardy. Um, I said it is modern day Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jed, good. Jed Clampett. I mean, you're not going to see Cloris Leachman, but <laughs> Cloris Leachman. Death oh joke. Da 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 da. Yeah, did you ever did you ever see that? Now we've video, gone the, past the moon. You ever see the <laughs> where, the Jack Black love story with Cloris Leachman? Go ahead, I'll just leave it alone. Okay. No. Oh my God. What? Just Google <laughs> Jack Black Cloris Leachman. You'll love it. Done. Oh God. Sorry, main event time. Main Sorry, event man. time. Oh, God. Finn Balor defeated Pete Dunne in a 25-minute great match. Uh, this, this was fantastic, I thought. Um, I will say I know it was brought up that uh, maybe the storytelling between Kushida and Gargano's match are based around the injury or well, fake injury of Johnny Gargano was a little too similar to uh, Pete Dunne focusing on the glass jaw and hurt hand of – Finn Balor. Um, personally, this didn't bother me too much, but I guess I can see the argument for it. Um, I think that's my one real only thing I can say about this match. I thought it was great, though, otherwise. Yeah, from start to finish, it was hard-hitting. Um, the reason why I love Pete Dunne in the ring so much is because he can go fast, 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 but then he can turn it around and pull it back and it works within what he's trying to do offensively. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, his joint manip uh, manipulation, I think, is superior to the villains. How, mm -hmm. However, um, I, I thought this was a great, great, great matchup. Like, like I said, it was between this and the men's du Dusty Cup finals for the best match of the night. Um, I am very curious to see what happens next. Well, speaking of, uh, Dwight, you want to give your thoughts on the match before we get to post-match? Yeah, I was like, well, if you add in post-match, this is the match of the year so far for me, but um, I and and I agree with you on the joint. Wait, wait, match of the year, period, or NXT's match of the year? Yeah, NXT's match of the year so okay. far. So All far, right. we're only in, we're only in February, man. But um, and it's and it's and <laughs> it's and you it's, period. Well, you know, we do. It's not. It wasn't. Um, well, no, I'm just thinking we haven't. We haven't. Well, we haven't had yet. Well, maybe the U.S. I don't know. Whatever. But you know, it, as I was, um, I mean, I just watched it. I really got into. I like those two. Um, I always have, but. Uh, the the ending made it for me i'm sorry that just it just was the icing on the cake and it just as good as the match was they needed to have something not stupid happen af afterwards right to c continue the story and i that was awesome i loved it so it was very much so nxt chicago-esque wouldn't you say right very yeah. much yeah well according if and according to cage match so far um, they've got Johnny Gargano versus Kushida as the 24th best match of the 2020s. So that's 
last year and this year. And saying, saying something. Yeah, we, it, and you have, and yeah, it's this one is way down there. It's because it's just, it's, it's just slightly better. Oh, it's uh, 57. So it's just above Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, hey man, I'm telling you what the, I'm telling you what, uh, ever how many, well, no, no, you have to have 50 votes. So a minimum of 50 votes. So it's wow. 100, 143 votes. So that's a lot of people. That's, um, those are hot takes there. Those yeah, are that's hot, a hot, hot takes. <laughs> so, so is this going to be W of, of the very rare WWE five-star match? That's what I'm going to ask. I would tell you, I would not be surprised. Okay. I would not be surprised. I've seen some people have uh, MSK versus Grizzled Young Vets as three stars, and that blew my mind. What? Yeah, okay. yeah I thought I thought that deserved higher rating personally. Um, but you know, people are crazy. So people are, people are crazy. Uh, Post match, Finn Balor and Pete Dunn. Balor is posing on the ramp, and he gets attacked by Danny Burch and Oni Lorkin. Uh, and Pete Dunn joins them when they hit the ring and who should come to their aid but the one stable who we didn't talk about on the sh- on the show Stock the system yeah. Undisputed Era <laughs> hits the ring bad guys get out Kyle O'Reilly's helping Finn Balor up Undisputed Era hit pose they hit the U and the E oh, there you go and uh I did it, Finn Balor, got it. working on my hand eye coordination. You know, yeah, you got to work on that, man. Uh, I'm so it's, it's just so much easier. It's too sweet to uh, very much so. <laughs> but uh, watch that. But Adam Cole super kicks Finn Balor while he's standing with him. <laughs> well, you know, Matt, you, you 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 let me just say, as watching it live, I was at all these mixed emotions because I'm like, God, please don't turn Adam Cole face. Whatever you do, don't turn Adam Cole face, you know, because that's because and I mean Kyle O'Reilly, I can buy as a face. Bobby Fish, I can buy as a face. Roderick Strong, I can buy as a face. I can't buy Adam Cole as a face. I'm sorry, he's so much better as a heel. And so when they're doing that, and and he's got the, you know, they're doing the UE, and you're waiting, and I thought, oh my gosh, is Finn Balor going to join the Undisputed Era? Is that is that happening right now? And then he, of course, gives his little, you know. He gets like a quarter like of the way. Up why he doesn't do with the gun. Yeah, and gets the zombie the, hands kicked kick, kick, kicked out of a skull. God, it was so good. It was so good. Kyle well, O'Reilly is wondering agree. what the hell Adam Cole's doing. Kyle O'Reilly eats a super kick. Right. Adam what Cole's is- walking out. He tells Roderick Strong, "Let's go." Roderick Strong right. still standing in the ring. Uh, fade to black with Adam Cole up at the top of the ramp. Right. And he reminded me so much. Remember when uh, when Kenny Omega took over as the leader of Bullet Club and they kicked AJ Styles in the face? You know, I was it was this, I was like, oh my god, yes. And so, um, yeah, I was I was all about it. And I mean, you know, because I was I was just marking out like crazy. Because I even told my wife, and she doesn't care. I was like, I was like, I needed Adam Cole to remain a face. I mean, remain a heel because he's so much better as a heel, and he is he is a master. At, at having people cheer him and then immediately making you hate him. Like, you know what I mean? He can do the whole Adam Cole, he can do, baby. He can do boom, and they all chant with him. And then he gets up in there, and within 30 seconds, you already hate him again because he's done something to make you hate him. And that, that is why he is one of the quintessential heels, right? I mean, he and MJF, I think, are right there as far as heels mm-hmm. in wrestling today. Absolutely my- agree. This was long overdue in my eyes. Um, I thought they really pushed Undisputed Era um, when we had the Adam Cole Pat McAfee feud. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was kind of taking it a little too far. Um, we got a War Games match out of it because what's War Games without Undisputed Era? Um, Bad. But yeah. Um, but other than a forgettable tag team title run, this has not been a high profile year for Undisputed Era. Right. Um, it led me to even go out on a limb for my 2021 predictions that they would be on the main roster by this point. Of course, I'm wrong. 
but at the same time, this was your only option without, without pushing them to the main roster is to break them up. Um, yeah. It looks like, though, that we will get um, Cross and Balor and possibly um, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly at Mania Weekend which I'm very excited for. Um, how how Roddy plays into everything is still a question mark. Um, Roddy already has his own solo music, so we're good. Yeah. He does. He was all. He was also a face. Yeah. Um, he was. He was next level. <laughs> yeah. Also, this kind of leaves Bobby Fish kind of in limbo because he wasn't even there. Bobby Fish um, ain't healthy enough to be there. Right. Well, yeah. Um, but he's I mean, still period. in the Yeah. So, like, I mean, in his NXT slash wrestling career. Ever yeah. been healthy. But well, it, very intrigued to see what happens next. Though. What, well, how would, how would you like to see uh, Adam Cole aligning himself with Karrion Cross? Wouldn't that be something I would pay money to see? That would uh, be like Sammy Guevara. That. that would be like Sammy Guevara being Black Taurus in Decay. Like, who would ever come up with that idea? impact mm-hmm. wrestling <laughs> i like it i i think um i mean thinking of i mean i'm going back to adam cole like ring of honor adam cole you know like the kingdom adam cole and and oh, yeah. there's 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 things you can do with him um that just being i mean he could be that they, that could be a pretty that could be your Shawn michaels and diesel you know what i mean i mean that's that's and and i'm, I'm all about that i'm loving it It'll be very interesting to see what happens moving forward. But uh, guys, with that, it's time to close out our show. So, uh, Cod, hit him with the plug. Yeah, um, already plugged. Um, the Ref Bump, go check it out, um, where Jeff and I essentially take a big dump on WCW in the year 2000 um, with the second worst pay-per-view I've ever seen in my life. With the first one being Heroes of Wrestling. <laughs> and I will never forget yeah, that did. in my entire life. Okay. Yeah, um, you need to watch some more. Yeah, go watch go watch Quick Count. A lot of videos coming tomorrow. Two, three special videos also dropping tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, Kyle, one one of us in this group paid full price to watch that pay-per-view back when it happened live. I'll tell you this, it wasn't me. Yeah, well. yeah, I watched it on the YouTube for free, and I still think I overpaid. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah. guys, if you liked what you heard tonight, you know, uh, subscribe, follow, like, help some, help, help some brothers out, help some good brothers out. But if you really liked what you heard, we have this link at kofi.com slash pwo123. It's as easy as one, two, three. Uh, and for the small price of a cup of coffee, you can help us put out these great shows all the time so with that guys thank you guys very much thank you for sticking around for this one sorry for once again the technical difficulties but we'll see y'all live on thursday and with that i must bid you all adieu goodbye good night bang